Now, it's the second Sunday, and so we're going to move into some prophetic ministry time. All right, good morning. My team, go ahead and come on up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you're not familiar with prophetic ministry, we believe in the fullness of the kingdom. We believe that every son and daughter of God can hear the voice of God because he's your dad. Okay? And so we, we believe that you can hear him. We believe that it's important to practice the gifts, um, to test the gifts. So when we prophesy those things, if you guys um, uh, are called out, what we'll do is whoever has got a word for you, they'll give you the word that they feel like the Lord is saying. Some of us will tag on top of those things and, um, and add to those words. And what we ask you guys to do is you test the word, right? You test the word. You let us know, hopefully, you know, that we're hitting it, that, we're, that it's right, that it will touch a place in your heart because that's confirmation for us um, that we are hearing correctly. Do you know that we're not a false prophet if we get it wrong? A false prophet means they have a bad heart and they're leading you away from God. Everything in prophetic ministry ought to lead you to God, right, and draw you closer to him. So um, I – thank you. You guys can join in. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my word at the end. So do you guys have a word already for somebody? So um, I have a word for two. Um, you. What, what's your name? Joel. Okay, so I saw this burning, like, little spark in your stomach, but it's growing, and you've got this big flame around you. And I saw Romans 8, 8 11, which is the spirit of Christ who lives in you. Rose, the spirit of Christ who rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. So I feel like God is telling me that, you have, you have some giftings, but the one he's showing me right now is you're an evangelist. And he's saying that the fire that's around you, you don't know how to step into it. And the first, the, what he's telling me is, this goes with fire. He's saying stop, drop, and roll. But being something different for you, it means stop when you see someone. And he tells you, follow his leading, stop, look at him, and then you want to um, drop, which means drop your testimony about what Jesus has done in your life, Drop your testimony and then roll. He's saying roll and just roll with it after that because you're really good with people and talking to them. Good. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I just I I know having gone and done street ministry with you that you have a heart for evangelism and I just want to affirm that in you again that that's really what the Lord is imparting into you, if I may. Lord, I just thank you for that and I just impart to Him, Father, a greater understanding and awareness of His calling as an evangelist, Lord, to love those who are lost and who need you. And I thank you, Father, that you plucked him out of the pit, Father. I thank you that he has a powerful story. I don't even know your story, but, but I thank you, Father, that uh, you're going to give him the words and fill his mouth for those that you send in front of him. So I thank you for that, God. Thank you for that. You guys have anything to add? Me too. And, um, you know, mine is just God is very well pleased with you. Sorry. I'm not used to this. He is so pleased with you. He's so happy with you. He just has a love affair with you, over the top of you. He's just resting. His anointing is pouring down on you even right now. You're a great man of God. It's overwhelming for me to see that. Thank you, Lauren. Do you have a word for something? Praise the Lord. Um, the word I have is for the brother sitting here in blue. Yesterday, I went to the store, and when I saw this T-shirt, I immediately knew I had to buy this T-shirt, and I was supposed to wear it today. And what I believe the Lord is sharing with me to give to you is that the, the roaring that you see here, that the Lion of Judah is roaring in your life, specific words of authority that he wants you to partner with him on so that it becomes one with you, so that as you begin to declare the things that the Father has given you to, to declare, there's going to be all kind of breakthrough that is going to begin to happen in your life, and you're going to see some promises that you thought were not going to come to pass as a result of you stepping into your authority in him. Those things are going to begin to come to pass. Okay, so I see you as a couple. You're a couple. Yeah, yeah you're a couple. Um, I, he's, I see that too, right on, like start making declarations to the Lord because he's going to hear you and your dreams that you've been dreaming about for a long time are coming. They're coming. 
I feel like I just saw a picture of you actually um, holding a jewelry box and that there's precious um, jewels, precious jewelry, precious jewels inside. And um, one of the treasures that he gave is each other in that and that you carry very unique things. In fact, I saw gemstones, the gemstones that I actually saw. I don't know if it's because of your shirt or not, but I'm going to tell you what I saw. But I saw turquoise, and that's one of my favorite um, gems and colors. It's, it's like a signature color for me. And, but it's, there's a hardness to it. There's a solidness. And I feel like the Lord is saying because you're solid and you're grounded and you provide that um, for one another. And I also saw rubies um, for you. And, and, and the ruby, you know, is wisdom. And so I feel like the Lord says that you carry a wisdom that you give. So make sure you listen to her because she has wisdom for you. And there's strength from you. So I feel like it's a, it's a pairing that the Lord put together that people might not think to put turquoise and ruby together, but he did it very intentionally for you. And he's inviting you to open up and explore the treasure of that that he's put inside of you. That's good. And even as she was speaking of um, the stones, I saw little gold nuggets just like falling from the sky over you and gold represents glory so i know that god's glory is covering you in any decision that you make um the young guy um in the black in the back like sitting next to um uh, the guy in like the peach shirt yeah. As God, you know, was um, pointing you out to me, um, I heard seek. And what came to me was Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And God was sharing with me that you were seeking him. And he hears and heard everything that you um, are is, is in your heart and that you have been asking for. And he said, yea and amen. Man, and to, to add to that, that as you sharpen your sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, as you become even that much more proficient than you already are in the Word, and as you begin to wield that, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. In fact, you can even begin going through your house making declarations and just have the sword in your hand, just walk through. I'm cutting through this, I'm cutting through that, and these, this is my victory in Him. I don't know your name, you, you're turning away, but it's not going to work. <laughs> this young lady here, Lauren, God sees you as a queen. He says he has bypassed your life as a princess. And your mother may have thought she was raising a princess, but she raised a queen. You are a queen in the order of Esther. And when you speak to the Lord, he lowers his scepter to you. And you're stoic and regal for a purpose. As a matter of fact, you're actually visually much like Queen Elizabeth for a reason. So just speak to him. He has much to give you. I have a word for um, April. April, it's right. April. Um, so I feel like you've been asking the Lord a lot of questions lately, like, and you don't know exactly where he wants you to go. But I got two pictures for you, and I'm going to describe them both. They're two, it's two tables. And one table is you're sitting with God. And it's you, and you're having coffee. And you're talking like friends. So I feel like God is telling me, you hear me, and you know it. You know you hear him. And the second table is there's, a, there's some kids and you, and you're doing crafts and stuff. And I feel like God's telling me, you have a matriar matriarchal, do you say that? Matriarchal generation. And like he, he, when he sees you, he sees like the best mom ever. And you're called, like sometimes you feel like you're not, uh, that's not enough. But you're raising, you're raising some little firecrackers. Like you're raising some people, some little people that are on fire, going to be on fire for the Lord. And it's really important in the season. Like that's what God's called you to. I don't know if that answers. Tell me later if that. The Lord delights in the simpleness of what you do. And there are a lot of times when you think that what you do is mundane doesn't matter, doesn't really do anything, but there's power in one little thing and one little movement and one, it's just you believing in it and knowing that he's in the middle of every little thing. So even when you're washing dishes or folding laundry or 
doing the littlest of things, they're powerful because you've touched them. When you partner with him and you touch things, you really touch things. And so I feel like the Lord is saying that um, though you may think that what you do is mundane or overly simple, it's powerful. And he's actually inviting you to begin to see things differently, to see some of those really simple things as great things, to actually begin to ask him to show you how he sees what you're doing. Because he's right there in the middle of it, whatever it is. And I think there's something really specific about that. I know she said arts and crafts, but I feel like there's something else. Um, I don't know what it is that, that you like to do, but the Lord says he loves doing that with you. It, she said all we do is arts and crafts. Okay, well, then, Lord, I thank you that you're drawing out right now the creativity that you placed inside of her and that you're bringing it up to a higher level right now. So we impart that grace right now, Jesus, for bold faith to recognize that what she puts together that that actually has life in it and actually can speak life to other people as well and it will bring life in fact i declare right now that the things that you will paint and create will actually bring healing to people the lord's going to put people thank you lord he's going to put people on your heart to actually make something for with him and you're going to give it to them and that gift although it may seem very simple is going to have a tangible power the, pro, the paul actually had um you know when he laid hands on uh, napkins and 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 prayer things or whatever, like it has a tangible power. I believe that everything in the world can hold a positive or negative charge, and what you do with God creates that. And so, thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, so that it's not all. See, okay, he's wanting me to correct your language. Like, it's all we do is arts and crafts. And he's like, no, not the way we do them. Not the way we do them. Like, he's creator God creating with you when he creates it's it's not just a little thing so thank you jesus um i have a word for you but i don't know your name ma'am with on the end right here mm -hmm. i'm sorry penny um i'm not sure exactly how this is going to unfold but i'm going to tell you how i saw it okay but i actually saw you going behind enemy lines going into prisons i don't know if you have a prison ministry or not but i saw you actually going behind bars and rescuing people from the other side almost like when soldiers go out like they find the pow's in the camp and they come out but and so i don't know if it's a practical if it's or if it's um you know if it's like word of knowledge or if it's something else but i just see a strong calling of a prison ministry with you that you're bringing people out of prison that you're bringing the lost and the wounded who are who are tied up and who are bound and you're setting them free the lord has given you a freedom ministry it is a calling for you that you have a heart for it that you have wisdom for it and i see you with a microphone i also see you with a pen i don't know if you're writing things down and stuff too or writing books and declaring prayers or things but you have a very solid and specific ministry to set the captives free and he's actually going to use your story he said whatever your story is he's going to use it because what the enemy intended for evil he will use for good in fact he's going to make you laugh at the enemy over it that every single person that gets set free is going to be able to laugh in freedom but he's asking that you begin to look for other people to join you on the team because you can't go at it alone and so even though oftentimes we're like pioneers there's another word I'm going to give later about that, but, but you cannot do it alone. You've got to find people who are going to come alongside you and hold your arms up to be able to help you do that. So if you haven't found those people, the Lord is asking for you to begin to pay attention. He's going to highlight those people for you. But I also believe some of them are going to come from some of these that free because their testimonies are equally as powerful and important and becomes a trickle effect. And so I see you raising people up in that ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for that. Do you guys have anything to add to her? No. Do you have another one? The woman in the dusty blue, your husband has his arm around you. I'm <laughs> yes, you. I hear God screaming, screaming. I want you to understand screaming. I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> um, Chris, yeah, sorry. About five weeks ago, I saw something for you, and I just didn't feel like can approach you so this is your wife's fault um when you were here god was giving out gifts one morning and he was ministering to people and healing but i saw a a black box in the center of you and it's been on my mind a lot but he says that it's a new voice 
it is actually a new voice, a mature voice. And he wants to just propel you into that. He actually gave it to you a while back, but would like for you to just discover. And the reason why it's black is it just hasn't been tapped into. But also, I kept seeing over and over again this morning, like, why is this box black? And I thought maybe the color, you know, you put the three colors together and they become black, black as many colors, but I believe it is because it also is communication with God, like a black box in an airplane. So um, he's really going to, you know, if you'll, if you'll go there with him, <laughs> it's already there. It's exciting. Chris, this is going to seem weird, but I'm hoping you're going to understand what this means. Because I just saw it. Um, and, it, and it's not bad. It's going to sound like it's bad, but it's not, I promise. So I see blue lightning all around you. But I also see a big, huge, gigantic well coming. And it's going to scoop you up in its belly. And it's taking you to your destiny. So I feel like something big is fixing to happen. And your destiny is going to be, it's just, you're just, going, to, it's just going to happen. Boom. Okay, so, and then I'm going to finish up. You guys can go ahead and sit down if you want to. Um, Al, I, I hear the Lord say consistency is the key. And I don't know exactly what he means by that because I, I know you, it's hard for me to prophesy words um, without feeling like it's somewhat tainted a little bit, but I'm just going to say it and give it and you filter, right? I feel like the Lord says consistency is the key, that you've been digging and you've been plowing and you've been pressing through. And he says, but it's just consistency with me in the easier things. Like I feel like he's saying there's some things that have been really um, where you want to go into hard places because that's what you like to do, like you wore over some hard places, and that's all good. But there are some things that are maybe somewhat easier or ought to be easier. And he says that consistency is the key. But what I feel like, it's actually a key that's going to unlock the bigger breakthrough that you think that plowing in the hard place was going to bring you that breakthrough. But and I, I feel like you're going to know what this is or he's going to show you. Um, but whatever the more simple thing is, um, consistency is the key. It's a consistency. And I just know that um, as prophets, we sometimes will start things and flit and then start things and flit and start another thing and flit. And we kind of hop around and juggle with lots of things. But I think there's something that he's highlighting to you specifically that I think he said you already know what it is. But he just says consistency is the key. It's the simple things, one day at a time, one step at a time. Consistency is the key. Um, It'll be the key to the breakthrough for everything else, whatever that is. And now this last word I want to give, it's really um, a corporate word. Um, As I was kind of sharing, I I want you guys to really know transparently that when I chose the set for this morning, I pray through every set, don't get me wrong, but I had no intention that it would all be about um, death and life and resurrection. Like I didn't have that clue until this morning um, when the Lord highlighted that um, that several of us were wearing black. And And it's just the way the Lord talks to me. I'm like, what are you saying? And he said two things. So I feel like It's for those people who are wearing black today, okay? There's a word in here for you specifically, but I really feel like it's for several people in the room whether you're wearing black or not. It's like when you go to a funeral, you wear black out of honor, right? And out of respect um, and stuff, people wear black to a funeral. And what I feel like the Lord is saying corporately is like, you know, um, it's okay to come in a place of honor and to come in a place of holiness. There are mysteries, the black represents a mystery of God that are to be unpacked, that he's wanting you to tap into in a little deeper way. He's calling you to go into the deeper places to uncover mysteries, but not just to uncover them and discover them for yourself, but he's wanting you to do that so that you can release it to other people, that there's a particular grace and a calling for you guys to come out of that place and move forward in it because we actually speak life. Um, When we actually come as believers, when we come to a funeral, we're actually celebrating the life of the person who lived and celebrating that they just entered into the real life, which is all of eternity in heaven with the Lord. Amen. And so I feel like that's something that he's inviting you into is discovering the mysteries of God going deeper so that there is life that is released and spoken through you. And I feel like a lot of you have, um, and, and this may be whether you're wearing black or not, but this is what I was sensing even during worship. I felt like, um, 
and, and honestly, this is kind of where I feel like I've been living in the last um, several while, is a plowing and a pressing through really hard things and hard seasons. And, and the thing is, is um, oftentimes when we feel like we're plowing hard things and we're not seeing the light of day and we're not getting to the end, like, you know, the phrase, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes when we're plowing, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. We're just supposed to just keep on plowing until we see the light, knowing that it's got to be there. It's going to be there at some point, but we got to still kind of press through whatever it is. And it's really easy to get discouraged and disappointed and want to stop and give up and go, okay, God, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Are we, are we even, am I even making any, like, are we getting anywhere in this? And you don't realize, like, you're creating a tunnel right, of escape for people, that you're, you're creating a tunnel and a place for people to come through. And um, yeah, I felt that one for you too, that, um, that, that you're, uh, it's, a, it's a plowing and a tunnel so that whenever you're like at the front, when you're first doing the digging, it's hard. It's hard being a pioneer. It's hard being the front place and digging, but you have to have the vision from the Lord to be able to plow to know where you're going, and you just you got to stay in that place of breakthrough. But that's why a lot of the songs that we sing are prophetic declarations. When you hear me say that in the song as I'm leading worship, I'm saying it because I feel the Lord saying it and declaring it too. Like we prophesy his promises, and we declare that he is resurrecting me, especially in those times and seasons when we don't feel it especially in the times when we feel like there's nothing but death around or there's nothing but disappointment or frustration or whatever it is, but you've got to be able to see the way he sees and know there is light at the end of the tunnel. And you're not just plowing for yourself. You're plowing for everybody else that's going to come behind you. You're going to make it so much easier for everybody else, but you've got to be able to continue to have hope, a confident expectation of good things coming a confident expectation. It's a little kid on Christmas morning expecting presents to be there under the tree and they're the things that I asked Santa for. Like, you hear what I'm saying? Like, it's a confident expectation of good. And so there are some of you that I know are in here, you don't have to raise your hand or anything. You know who you are. When you when you have been in that plowing season, if you're there, there, this is the other picture that the Lord gave me and he always talks to me in... Um, pregnancy terms, <laughs> birthing and pregnancy terms. There are some of you in here, um, as, as, as you're reading through Luke, um, we've been reading through Luke as a worship team. When, when Elizabeth was told that she was going to have a baby, she believed. And she celebrated. Go back and look through Luke, what she said. She said she celebrated with faith. She believed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, thank you, God, my barrenness is broken. My barrenness is broken. And then she secluded herself for several months. The Lord had me really look at that. And she secluded herself. Why? So that she could get away from everybody else that would speak the opposite of what the Lord said. You're going to need to get into your closet and into your prayer closet and into your prayer time with the Lord and to begin to steward those promises no matter what anybody else is saying. And you only stay around and show those words to people who will actually spur them on and throw fire on it with you. Okay, to keep it going, because that's what hope does. Okay, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when you have hope, look, the baby wasn't there just yet, right? It was the word that came, and then she received it. But the other thing is, is whenever Mary came, when uh, Gabriel came to Mary, and she said it, the same thing, she had faith to believe it, right? And then she shows up, her faith saying, let it be done unto me, as you said. I'm the Lord's servant, right? And then what happens? She goes and finds a person of like faith who was carrying a promise that was yet to be delivered. And these two women, when they got together, the baby inside Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy. And the spirit shows up, this thing happened, and Elizabeth starts to prophesy. Go and look at it. It says she prophesied loudly, and with power. She declared something. She declared the Messiah was in the womb of the one who just walked in the door. No one told her that. No one told her that. The Holy Spirit told her that. And then Mary burst out in song. I love that. She burst out in song. You guys... When people of faith can come together with people of faith, that's what ought to happen. That's what this is about. 
That's what church family is about. That's what corporate worship is about. So I want to encourage you. And I'm going to leave with this prayer. Father, we say yes to you, God. That there are some of us who've been in a season where it's felt like barrenness, and you're saying, no, 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 you're not barren any longer. There's a promise I've placed inside of you. You've now conceived it. And there are some of you that are needing to steward this promise, and it seems like a long time coming. In fact, some of you may feel like me. You're like a week past due date, and you're like, can we just get this thing out already? So, God, I thank you that your timing is perfect for all things, but we will stay hopeful, and we will stay confident and expecting the thing that's coming. So we say yes to you, God. I ask for a refreshing to come right now, for hope to arise in everyone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise for that.